like, I'm not a circus monkey. I don't perform for you. The internet's forever, Mom. Don't do it. <laughs> We're doing it, pup. We're doing it. We're doing it, pup. talk to you guys today about um what we're gonna talk about how we chose our service dog trainer oh okay yeah how we pick Zarel's trainer no, yep. she just picked this one all right here i'm just gonna say get a different toy all right or we could just put her in her crate for 15 minutes They're all great. we wanted to talk to you guys today about how we chose Zarel's trainer um all right hang on all right yeah, so we want to talk to you guys about how we chose Zarel's service dog trainer. I know that that's like a very intimidating process and it's something that took us a really long time to figure out. And so it's probably something a lot of other people are figuring out too. Yeah, um, a lot of people, you know, they see service dogs out and about and service dogs are a piece of medical equipment just as much as Charlotte's wheelchair or someone's walker, someone's inhaler. But no one really thinks about, well, where do you get a service dog? Like, you know, you don't just pick one up at the pharmacy. That'd be convenient though. <laughs> Hello, I'm here for my service dog. Please have a script. Okay, but on a serious I'm note. I'm serious. I prepared some questions for Charlotte that will kind of talk about, like, the story of you getting a service dog. Oh, story? Okay. Well. I think overall, let's tell a story, but I have questions uh -huh. that I have thought about. Okay. So, can you talk about when you started thinking about getting a service dog? I started thinking about getting a service dog uh, maybe like five years ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and five years five is years a long time. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And you just got your dog, mm -hmm. well, Zarell is gonna be one year old next week and she's not quite yet a service dog. Yeah. So it's already been five years and you still don't really have a service dog. Mm hmm. That, 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 is, that is true. Yes. Um, so what prompted you to think about getting a service dog? I feel like we're on Ellen and I'm supposed to have tea or something. Um, Would you like me to make tea? We no. can try attempt five. <laughs> no, no, we're good. You know. What was the question? I forgot. <laughs> Basically, I'd hit this point with like my like disabilities where I was struggling to do like I just like did not trust myself to like go to the store alone anymore and I was having tons like I was just like I was working like four hours a day like three or four days a week and like totally wiped out and like at my like most like stressed end and I was like really struggling to like function independently and I had like friends who were like going out of their way to like do stuff with me and to like go to the store with me and to like help me do I can't remember um but that's kind of the point I guess um and so I was having a lot of hard time and I really wanted to like be able to just do those things again like everyone else does we started looking into like whether or not we thought that like a service dog would be a good fit. I would also like to say that like we did talk to my doctor, my therapist, and like my whole care team and they all also agreed that like a service dog would be really helpful. It wasn't just like something that we decided to jump into on our own. Yeah. So, you know, it wasn't any one thing where you like saw someone walking around with a dog and you were like, you know, I should just get one of those. Yeah, no. It was it was part of this journey of like accepting that I needed things beyond myself in order to function in the same way everyone else did. Yeah, and so as you started thinking about this, what was like, 
your first approach or how did you think you were gonna get a service dog? Oh boy, I did the me thing and I, I think the millennial thing and I hit the Google machine. Um, <laughs> I hit the Google machine hard. So I read a bunch of articles about like service dogs and websites of like trainers and services that train dogs and like, um, like, um, I'm sorry. And publications like essays by um, service dog trainers about the different tasks they can train and how they help people and you know because I, I first discovered okay well like you know in order to like be a service dog it has to like do very specific tasks and I was like okay valid um, and at first I was like oh no how am I gonna find like I can't even think of enough tasks to like qualify. I want to interrupt you for one uh -huh. minute. The ADA says that a service dog has to do one task. So like okay. someone that has a seizure dog that like detects seizures, mm -hmm. it, even if it only does one task, it's still a service dog. Yeah, I found a webs an article from a trainer that works in Michigan actually, um, at an organization who I've never talked to more than two emails called Sterling Service Dogs, but she wrote about like um, she'd done a bunch of training of like psychiatric service dogs and wrote a bunch of like very specific things that they can train dogs to and I'm like, wow, those are all so helpful. I was like, they can do that. Um, and so I think that was kind of my entry into like looking at things. Yeah, and, and so I, I think the first thing that I found were like these like major agencies where like you know you apply and then you pay them like twenty to thirty thousand dollars and then like two years later you go and you meet with them for like two weeks and then they like train you a dog. Um, well they train you a dog during that two yeah, to three years. Well they, they train they train okay they train you on how to work with a dog basically. Seems to be like the format of these and that was like the first method I found. Yeah. And so when we met you now probably three years ago, mm -hmm. that is the path you were pursuing to get a dog. Mm -hmm. So you were fundraising money. Mm -hmm. um, you started a GoFundMe uh, and you were fundraising money for the like twenty to thirty thousand dollar agency program. Yeah. The people who did help I mean that, that money has helped significantly in Zoro's training and that was like it, it was helpful and like all the people really like did really contribute. It wasn't near what I needed to get to go that route. And also, um, I started finding that there were very few trainers, or well, agencies like that, that would have been a good match to work with me. Yeah, so each agency, I, um, this is something, so like you had been fundraising money, mm -hmm. and you at this point had fundraised two to three thousand dollars, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a large sum of money. But um, you were looking at all these agencies, and all these agencies had twenty-five to hundred-dollar application fees, mm -hmm. and they were all very, very specific. Mm -hmm. um, and so you hadn't found a specific agency to reach out to um, that you like wanted to commit all this money. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is the point where I stepped in. And I was like, you know, this. I really recognize this is something that would be good for Charlotte, good for our family. So I stepped in and I started emailing all of these programs. And this was at the beginning of the pandemic. And all these programs started responding back to me that they had a three to five year wait before they would take your money. But first they needed that like $50 application fee. So first they'd like take that $50 and sometimes you had to travel. So like we had to, they would say like, okay, fill out this like 10 page application and then send us the $50 in the application and then we'll take two to three months to review it. Then we'll have to, you'll have to travel to whatever part of the country we're in and do a meeting with us. And then there'll be a two to three year wait. And then in two to three years, we'll start a dog for you. And then it'll be about a two to three year wait. And then you'll have a dog. Um, and you know, looking at that and, and just, Feeling that way, program by program by program, we were having so little luck. Yeah, but um, the other problem I ran into is that most like training organizations only train for like a single specific disability. 
um, and it's like usually like a small variation of like set of tasks. Um, and so like they'd only like teach mobility tasks or they'd only teach like hearing assistance tasks or they'd only teach like PTSD tasks. They weren't like, um, I don't think any that we talked to were like willing to even try like teaching tasks from like different categories. Yeah, and it was very often that if you needed a dog that did mobility work, you couldn't even have PTSD. Or um, if you were training a hearing dog, they were like, nope, sorry, we can't also teach your dog to uh, like do this other task from a different category. So the programs were all very limited, and they had a lot of requirements for you must have these specific disabilities, um, and you can't have these disabilities, and they just didn't feel very accommodating. If, if you're considering a dog, like there's a possibility you have more than one disability. So the fact that these programs weren't very flexible was really surprising to me. A lot of them also required that you live with at least two other people. And then there were some programs where they like maintain ownership of the dog and like I basically have like clauses in their contract where they can just like take the dog back at any time for any reason. Which, like, I understand if there's, like, a severe neglect, but that wasn't, like, how it was written. Um, so that was, like, kind of intimidating. There were, um, myriad barriers in that whole yeah. process. So after talking to, what, 20 to 30 programs in the country, I guess, how were you feeling? Or how were you feeling? How was I feeling? Yeah. I was feeling really overwhelmed. I mean, just the process of finding places that are like not search engine optimized at all and then like contacting them and reaching out and then getting rejected and then doing the whole thing it was it was a lot i mean we had to break up the process like that process had to be carried about by at least two people the whole stretch of the like, years of trying it because it was just like a full-time job for one person to do it was just so much work yeah and so at this point I was, I was considering I was I was online and starting to read forums and looking at other people's recommendation and I saw that a lot of people with multiple disabilities owner train and but the thing I was finding is like owner training by yourself or you know raising a puppy and turning it into a service dog the the rate that the dogs failed was really 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 high mm -hmm. um, and so Charlotte had also looked into that, and at the time you really weren't willing to do it. Yeah, it was, I wasn't. Like, I was like, I don't know how to do this. Like, this wouldn't be such a huge, there wouldn't be such a huge system, and there wouldn't be so many barriers, and there wouldn't be such high cost if it wasn't, like, a real skill. Having watched Cindy for, like, a, not a year, like, ten months now, I, like, definitely agree that, like, there's just like that special touch of like experience. Yeah. I think just about as we were going to give up, we were feeling pretty defeated. We came across um, some programs that we were going to go for. These programs had no weight. Um, they were on the other side of the country and they were just going to give us like a trained dog but for like way too much money and they had one ready to go in three months. And if you've, if you've done any research into service dogs at all, you know that this is almost definitely like all the red flags of a scam. And then people get scammed a lot, like applying for service dogs. We were like very cautiously poking it and like looking into like all of the certifications and like documentation and like emailing them and asking to talk to like actual people who had worked with them. And there was a lot of like pushback on those things. Like, yeah, uh -huh. and that's how it really felt like these places had a lot of red flags. Like, we were just going to throw the money at it, get a dog, but all these red flags, I'm so thankful we didn't we go for it. We didn't have the money to throw it at I mean, we didn't. We were going to go in debt for it. We needed it. But then I, like, I just decided, I just had, like, those, like, spidey feelings. I was, like, I decided not to. Yeah. I decided not to. And then around then we met, how did we meet Cindy? Yeah, so around the same time, I had reached out to a program I learned about here in Michigan. Um, it was a trainer, our current trainer, and she didn't have a ton of information on her website at the time, but I ended up emailing her 
and like at the time I already had like a full like paragraph write up of like what we were looking for mm -hmm. and I remember she like first thing right away she just called us she talked to us on the phone for I think about an hour mm -hmm. um just like very 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 personable I remember that I really liked her and I remember that the reason that I really liked her was that was the way that she talked about dogs um like so many places like that we talked to in all these programs talked about like dogs as like a machine or a commodity um because it, like they're quite literally the product they're selling and they're literally trying to make them as uniform as possible so that you know literally just like what they are all these organizations but um the way cindy talked about dogs really reminded me of my best friend and she talked about them as animals and as the things they experience and their motivations and how that plays into training and people always talk about like service dog teams as like teams and partners but so many organizations don't actually really talk about like a dog as a member of the partner just outside of their basic needs. Yeah but the one thing we were really worried about is that it would be an owner training program where we would end up with a puppy um, and have to go through the program ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that was absolutely terrifying. We were not ready for a puppy. Mm -hmm. um, I think, in fact, I think we have a, a video on when we first got Sorrel. Mm -hmm. um, and in the video, we talk about how absolutely terrified we were to get a puppy, like excited, but terrified. To be fair, all of our like terrified feelings were absolutely 100% warranted. It was a, so much work. It was a lot of work. It was a lot to adjust to and it was a lot to learn very, very quickly. Um, so the way that our program with Cindy and with Zarel works is that um, Zarel goes to class. She has both private classes, like her and her trainer, and I us, and she has like group classes, so with other dogs, which I think has been really good because it's helped her like learn to ignore other dogs while she's working. Um, and like other people and other people doing things and treats falling on the ground and you know she's like learned to work through a lot of that so she goes and does those that and we do the reinforcement work and we like board her so we keep her at our house and feed her um, which a lot of like even like really big service dog organizations like it's very similar to how they handle it except they just have like a like a host person yeah. who does like the boarding and the individual like yeah, they're upkeep. called puppy raisers and I yeah. am after having a puppy I don't know who in their right mind would volunteer to be a puppy raiser but all of you that are mm -hmm. like we thank you because <laughs> uh, it's a lot of work you're uh, getting yourself into it but is. the people who have dogs from you I'm sure are absolutely thankful it's a, a new, it's like a newborn infant that can jump, run, and climb. I think the biggest deal is like dog, like babies, they'll fall asleep and you can leave the room. But dogs, the second they fall asleep, they wake up instantly. So like, the second you move, she woke right back up. And like, it was never ending. And then she'd start screaming again and again and again. Yep, like a bullet for 10 minutes and then a rock for half an hour and then a bullet for 10 minutes and then a rock for half an hour and that was just our life for a while. So the puppy part was very hard but um, I think since then as we've learned and she's learned it's gotten I think especially as we learned it's gotten a lot easier. And the interesting thing is most of the organization programs you get a dog about two years old. Um, our dog she is less than a year old and she already has been doing some tasks already somewhat reliably for you for a couple of months. Yeah. Um, so I think while there is some work mm -hmm. on your part, and I think, you know, some work just on the logistics of bringing her places and like places where we can't bring her yet. So I would say she's already really been helpful for you long before that two year wait process. We started really getting some of the immediate benefits of having a service dog in training, I'd say, probably at about her being seven months old. The two other reasons we decided to really like go all in and trust Cindy when we first started working with her, because I know this is part of really like how we picked her. Yeah, or that, why we picked her. Yeah, is that we talked to, we'd reached out to several other like organizations and trainers in Michigan, 
and they're all like, so we won't work with you, but this woman is really good and she will. Um, like we've worked with her. So she came recommended by a bunch of other like actually vetted organizations. And also she guarantees her training, which is super, super rare. Like a lot of times like if you have a dog and they wash out, you just have to like start over again, you know, and just the, with the whole thing. And that's what we have to do here. But if Zarel washes, um, like our trainer will donate her time to train a new dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and through the years of training, she she does seem to have a higher success rate than the majority of other like owner train programs we've talked to. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's really been wonderful seeing how she works with Zarel. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad we went this route because I don't think that two to three weeks worth of training on how we work with a dog would have been enough yeah. for us because the whole process of training Zarel has really been our trainer training us. Mm -hmm. Like, and I say this because like, you know, she taught us how to walk the dog on the leash. Um, and how to give feedback and like, she told you when you were accidentally telling Zarel things you didn't mean to, and um, yeah, and really, she she's valued uh, that bond between like Charlotte and Zarel so much, um, and really been able to recognize like when is she pushing Charlotte too much? When is she pushing Zarel too much? Like when should we take a break because Zarel's going through like veterinary stuff or isn't feeling well or like isn't focused and why um it it's been so personal personal that i, I think it's life-changing one of the things that people who like use big organizations run into is that they do have like a longer process when the dog gets home of like the dog knows how to do all their tasks with the trainer but now the dog has to learn how to do their tasks with the person and so, you know, we're working more and we have more to figure out, but we're also skipping that step. Yeah. Um, and she'll be ready younger, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know. We're absolutely crossing our fingers that she won't wash out because she is a really fabulous dog. So, you want to ask me questions, but I have a question for you. Okay. Now, which kind of gets back to the root of this, because you're the one who found Cindy. So do you have any advice for people who are like trying to find a training organization or like a trainer or yeah. anything? Like I think you touched on this a little bit. I think one of the biggest things is figure out what you need from a dog. Um, like, you know, figure out how can a dog actually help you? Um, and then also, just start reaching out to different programs. Like, reach out to as many as you can. Use Reddit, use Facebook groups. There's so many social media groups with people with service dogs, and it's really probably the best way to find trainers or programs or think about how you can go through this process because I would say I learned a lot. There were some things we didn't think about when we got our dog. And there's also a lot of learnings that you can have from other oh, service dog owners. Of course, there's also like lots of false information out there. So be vigilant. If something doesn't feel right, don't do it. Don't sink a bunch of money into it. Um, and don't be afraid to ask for references. Like good programs and good trainers have references and they're not afraid to give them. Yeah, both health references for their dogs and also like for their trainers and their programs and like they'll connect you with past teams and yeah. that kind of stuff. I will say one of the other major advantages of our service dog trainer is that she picked out our dog for us. A lot of owner training uh, trainers will not pick out the dog for you. They'll just say, if you bring a dog, I'll help you train it because they're, they also train like not just service dogs, they'll train um, just like dogs for good obedience, but then they'll help you like do some service tasks. Um, so that's a route some people go as well. But I think one of the major differentiators is our trainer 
spent time looking for a dog. She worked with us to um, like test different dogs and figure out which dog from the litter would actually be a good fit for Charlotte. Yeah, mm -hmm. she actually, and it's interesting because even now, like I, when the dogs are almost are nearing their like first birthday next weekend, actually, um, she will still talk about how like you know here's like this trait that she saw in them as puppies, which is why like she matched this dog with this person and not with that person or not with that person. Yeah, uh -huh. and she doesn't breed them herself, but she's just developed relationships with breeders that she knows and trusts and let her have the first pick in the litter mm -hmm. so that she can match people with service dogs. I, I think that is like, that goes to her personality. Like, you know, I think a lot of the things our trainer does are, are really a testament, like not just to her being a good trainer, but her being able to build the relationships in the community um, to like help people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's very skilled and she's very kind. She also knows like, how to talk to disabled people. We'll link her information down in the description. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested in seeing any other service dog videos? If so, let us know what you'd like to know and um, let us know if you have any questions about like getting a service dog or like tasks a service dog can do. Um, you know, we've learned a lot through the process. We don't claim to know everything at all. There's a lot to know, but anyway. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, this has been fun. Thank you for bringing questions. No problem. Yeah, that's so helpful. Um, and until next time, keep rolling forward.